Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I am interviewing Ashley, and I think that this one, this interview is a little bit different than some of the other ones that I've done because Ashley has had a very, very significant health challenge along with being a mother and purchasing and owning a business. And there's a couple bullet points in there that I think that you'll take away. So enjoy the podcast. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Thank you for making the time to do this. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And on a holiday. I know. (laughs) It kind of worked out well because of that, actually. Yeah. So um, I would love it if you would start out by just giving me a little bit of your background. You obviously are a business owner now. Mm -hmm. Um, COO is your title. (laughs) (laughs) But how did you you progress to that? So where did you start? Where did the business come into play? I know you guys bought the business eventually, but will you start back kind of at the beginning so that people can learn a little bit about you? Yeah. So um, I started for another company doing background screening, just like data entry verifications. And then my husband started working for them as well, Mm -hmm. doing sales. Um, And then we had an opportunity to work for his aunt and uncle in a completely different field. Um, They had a family tragedy and then they wanted to start a new company. Um, So we started this with them Mm -hmm. um, and just started from the ground up. And I was doing like what I was doing at the previous background screening company. And then we just learned a lot from his aunt and uncle of how to start a business Mm -hmm. and just kept working towards that. So I started doing the same thing I was doing and then learned more and more and more. And we bought the business in April of 2021 from them. How old were you when you started with the previous company? It's in 2006, I want to say. So 22. Three, twenty-two. So you were young. Young. Yeah. 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 Was it? Did you think at that point? Oh, no. <laughs> I, yeah. No. I, I was like, I knew that. But, yeah. <laughs> it was just a data entry job, and uh-huh. um, I was coming off of being super sick. Um, so I just wanted to get back into working again, mm-hmm. and it was an easy job, not retail or anything like yeah. that, that I could have steady hours and go mm-hmm. in, do my job, and then. Yeah. Go home. So we'll talk a little bit about your health journey too. But so when you started um, the business with the aunt and uncle, I guess you were technically employees for them. Yes. Yeah. What What did that look like when you decided to buy the business? Like how was that transition? Because I would imagine people buy companies all the time, but when you're buying it from family, uh, family yeah, yeah, a relative, there's probably some different interaction that happens. Yeah. So I think that was always the intent behind it. Like, mm-hmm. They've always really been focused on creating a legacy inside of that family, Mm -hmm. Um, and they took a leap of faith on us. So that was always the intention going in, is that we would take it over, and it's a highly litigious um, industry, so um, they didn't want (laughs) to stay in it anyways. Mm -hmm. So um, the time just came that it was time for us to take it over and we were in a financial position to do it Mm -hmm. so yeah what um how did the transition go was it pretty smooth yeah it was really smooth um of course there were like attorneys and stuff involved negotiating price um but yeah it was really really seamless Mm -hmm. we're still very close with them and everything like that so and what has that been your son is five Mm -hmm. right so what has that been like well would you guys would have been purchasing the business right about the same time that you had he would have been what, he was um, born in 2017 so he was 3 okay, when three we were, going. were okay. yeah so you were taking over ownership and you mm-hmm. had a 3 year old and we were moving here and you're moving <laughs> yeah yeah it was a lot for that sure. sounds like a lot. But how, so how did that, obviously, you know, this is moms making six figures. Mm-hmm. So I always love to ask women, especially in those intense times when you have a lot going on, mm-hmm. how, how did you, 
Like, what did you do? What were your coping mechanisms? How did you balance? Um, How did you? I lean on my family a ton and friends. Um, and my faith in God um, is a big thing. And just trusting that we were on the right path. Yeah. Um, it was super scary leaving um, California because that's where all my, like, doctors and everything was. So um, I think just having faith that this was the right path yeah. for us to move, transition from there to here mm-hmm. and just a better life. Like, I just focused on the better life that we were going to have here. Mm-hmm. What? Um, so let's talk about that because you – so you have – a pretty significant health condition Mm -hmm. on top of the fact that you own a business and you're a very active mom. So will you tell me a little bit about the health piece? Because I know that that plays, it's very woven into the fabric of you. Very. In 2004, I went into it. I was a diabetic from like the age 12 on. In 2004, I went into a diabetic coma. I woke up. And they told me that they had removed 21 feet of my intestine um, and that I was going to live on, like, IV nutrition. And my parents were just not okay with that answer. So they found a surgeon at UCLA that does transplants. I was moved there, added to the transplant list, and transplanted in August of 2004. Um, Then it slowly rejected my pancreas. My small intestine rejected shortly after that. Mm -hmm. Then they retransplanted me in January of 2010. Okay. Um, and then I've had like ongoing stuff forever. Like I will always be you, on anti right. rejection meds yeah. and constantly going back to UCLA for checkups and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it's a fine balance of like medication and. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's an interesting one because diabetes is, is no, I mean, yeah, that's hard to navigate alone. Yes. And then you add something else that's major that also brings in medications that you're having to balance all of those. But then you own a business, which adds stress. Yes. (laughs) I mean, not that life isn't stressful for people Uh that have a profession where they're working for someone else, but there is kind of this like little higher layer. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. We have to make sure like our insurance can cover my medical. Like, Mm -hmm. so insurance costs are big for us and our company because mainly because of me and my situation. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that was a factor in deciding to like buy it, move it, all those things to make sure that I can go back to California for my care. Mm -hmm. So do you have any teachings? So there's a lot of women that listen to this podcast. Probably some are contemplating starting a business or Mm -hmm. purchasing a business. A lot of people look at purchasing. Um, Do you have any words of wisdom from the purchase side? I mean, I know it's a little bit different because it was a family purchase, but you still went through the purchase of a business. Um, Legal advice for sure, like making sure the contracts are fair Mm -hmm. for everybody involved. Like we knew going into it that they wanted to make money off of it as well, but at a fair price. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, just... To be brave in it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's like sure of your decision. Be bold. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's the case in any kind of business ownership. Right. Yeah. Especially nowadays. I feel like um, there's so many things that are constantly changing. There's so many amazing things about technology, but then there's so many things that change constantly that as a business owner, it's like you have to be pretty bold to take those steps. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's changing so much in our industry, like with each administration that gets voted in, like our laws are changing every two to four oh, years. Yeah, yeah so, for you guys, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. So contrast that with you have a five year old mm-hmm. who's playing t ball. Yes, and <laughs> <laughs> that was another huge thing. Like they didn't know if I was going to be able to have children um, because I was not like they didn't have a lot of history on the type of transplant that I've had Mm -hmm. um, or successful pregnancies. So we weren't sure. Um, And I did lose a pregnancy in 2014. I was 21 weeks along. Um, So that was hard, like leading up until the second pregnancy. Like we weren't trying for either one of them Mm because we just never knew Mm -hmm. if I could. And the second one went great. Like I had no health issues whatsoever. Yeah. So 
he's a blessing for sure. Yeah. yeah. And he's active, I would imagine. Very, very yeah. active, nonstop from the second he wakes up till the second <laughs> he goes to bed, he's active. So do you and your husband balance that or are you mainly the caretaker? Um, I do a lot of like the drop off pickup for school okay. um, and whatnot. But my husband's very involved um, with his sports and everything. Our office is five minutes away from his school, which is very convenient. I was going to say, that's one of the nice things about business ownership. Yes, you can decide the where you are. Freedom <laughs> to, like, have to go pick, up, pick him up and take him somewhere or appointments or, like, going to events at his school. Like, mm -hmm. having that freedom, that was always my goal. Yeah. Um, in the business ownership, I think, like having that end goal, because I wasn't sure if I was going to have a kid or not. Mm -hmm. And that was always like my main thing that I looked forward to as a woman um, is being a mom. So once I got it, I was like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to be able to be there for him. It's a lot of the women that I work with. That's the case. It's you. I don't know. I say this all the time, but children just change you. And you mm -hmm. you think you're prepared and you think you have it laid <laughs> right. out and mm -hmm. you think you know everything. And then, no, you don't. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's really just ultimately that's what it is. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> and I feel like I tell younger women that. And then yeah, when they have the child, they're like, okay. okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Pretty so, <laughs> Okay. So a couple of the questions that I always ask my guests mm -hmm. are um, – Number one, do you have a podcast or a book or something that has given you inspiration or one that you just really enjoy? And it can be a mom book. Sometimes people <laughs> are like, oh, well, this is the one I'm reading my kids right now. But is there a book or a podcast that that you would recommend? Um, for a book, I really enjoyed Fierce Conversations. Um, that helped me a lot, like, deal with different personality types and, like, mm -hmm. how to talk to people and get your point across while also valuing their point mm -hmm. of where they're at. Um, especially cause me and my husband work together. Like yeah. that's a fine line of like <laughs> personal and business. Right. Um, that one is very helpful. And then podcast, I've always been a bachelor fan. Um, off the vine podcast is a great one cause she's humorous. She has like fun people on there, but also like, some meaningful ones too that you can learn from so cool yeah and do you remember when you hit six figures what that felt like I wouldn't say like I remember the specific time but when we bought our house here was huge because coming from California we lived in a two-bedroom two-bath condo no yard nothing and raising my son like that I was just like this is not fun so when we got our house and we were he was playing in the backyard while we were unpacking I just started like tearing up I was it meant so much to like be able to give him that life mm -hmm. so yeah. I think that was that's when a huge you. factor yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then the last one is mom tip do you have a mom tip that you can um, give? give yourself grace um and do stuff for yourself as well because mm -hmm. then it makes you be a better mom yeah yeah anything I didn't ask you about your journey your health journey your career path with the uh, maybe the way that they intersect. I mean, not there's not a lot of people out there that have obviously the significant health challenges that you do, and there might be some wisdom in that for others that are listening. I've always thought like I needed a balance of like work and drive and like also enjoying life because I didn't know if I was going to be able to like do the things. So I focused so much on like, um, doing things and not working hard like that was just not one of my passions but now it is like being able to create this life for our family mm -hmm. I think it was a big like light bulb for me like I'm it gonna have okay. to work hard mm -hmm. but also it's okay because it is creating the life that we want mm -hmm. there's always sacrifice yes always mm -hmm. just a matter of where it is right, right? and it's yeah. not about like what you're doing for a living obviously you want to feel some kind of like passion and stuff but just to work hard to create that life no matter what you're doing because mm -hmm. that's what's going to matter in the end is how you create what you created mm -hmm. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for taking the time. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's really <laughs> nice to have you on. And you're, we have so many 
um, people that listen, women that are, you know, aspiring. I love these stories because something that you said will touch someone. And yeah, so thank you for doing it. Thank you. Yeah. (laughs)